Okay, sir. Uh, we can start now. Go ahead, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, sir. Okay, okay. So, good evening, everyone. And I'm very sorry for, uh, let me first apologize for the little confusion that happened. And uh, we'll stick to the Wednesday schedule and try not to uh, change the timing or the date so that it doesn't become inconvenient. So I'm sorry for this uh, problem that happened. And I hope the last Supra session was useful to everybody. Uh, the other elbow fractures, which are important and which everybody should know about, is what we will cover today in the next one hour. Uh, the first of which is a very important fracture, the lateral condyle fracture. And I will just make this full screen and start talking. All right. Visible? Yes, sir. It's Hello? visible. Yeah. yeah. But those okay. things are coming on the <laughs> slide, the black things. That you said last time. If you can yeah. drag them out. Which, them. Flag? Which yeah, flag that one. Is? That one. Yeah, that one where your arrow is now. Uh, okay. Is that okay? Yeah, just hide that thing. Last time you did that. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, it is okay now. And the yeah. Video also, where the video column is, just drag yeah. it out of the frame. You can drag it, hold with mouse and drag out. It's out now, or I'll okay. shut the video. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, sir. I can stop video if you want. No, no, video is good, no problem. Okay. okay. Go ahead, sir. All right, so lateral condyle factors is what we want to talk about today. And, uh, Essentially, I would like to always put lateral condyle fractures into three major groups in clinical practice. The first group is a fresh fracture, and we'll talk about it separately. Second is what we refer to as repairable late presentations, because in our country, we never get patients right on the first day. A lot of them have gone and seen somebody else. It has been missed or treated with a local bone setter with massage or something. And the last group is the really delayed late of non-unions. And we'll try to address all these problems. We always focus on supracondylar fractures, but I think this is a more important fracture. And what makes it special is that first, the distal humerus is usually cartilaginous. You see only the ossific nucleus of the lateral condyle for up to nearly three to five years before the other ossific centers start coming up. So it's very difficult to visualize the fracture. Second, it is an intra-articular fracture being going to, into the joint. Third, it is also a facial injury which can cause growth disturbance. Fourth, there is very high chance of non-union in this fracture if not treated well. A supracondylar fracture, please remember, mal unites, whereas a lateral condyle goes into non-union. And even after surgery, there is chance of avascular necrosis and poor results. So if you look at the classifications of the lateral condyle fractures, there are very many classifications in literature, but I have found these three classifications to be of clinical significance and that they help you in making a decision on what to do for a particular fracture. The first one is the Mursky classification. The Mursky talks about from where does the fracture exit? We all know that the fracture starts on the lateral column or the lateral pillar in the metaphyseal region. But we don't know where the fracture exits because we cannot see the exit point unless it is a completely displaced fracture. I'll highlight that more later. The Milch classification actually, if you see his original paper, he spoke about stability of elbow. Depending on the size of the fracture fragment, is the elbow stable or it is dislocated? And the Jacob classification spoke about how much is the fracture displaced. So I'll just highlight that. 
if you see the exit of the fracture line which is very important the fracture line which starts here can either go straight down like this into the intercondylar region or it can go much more medially and go through the trochlear epiphysis now when this happens and the medial crista of the trochlea is involved the radius and ulna with that chunk can dislocate so that is a milch too or this can go like a transfacial injury you have a small thurston holland fragment but actually this becomes like a low supracondyle where the exit line is epiphyseal rather than being metaphyseal right so this problem is you can't see this because if you see this dark brown what i have shown here on the x ray you are going to see only this much you have no idea where the fracture is exiting so the milch one as i said is where the fracture the elbow is stable and the fracture line is lateral to the trochlear groove so if you see this the trochlea has two cristae a lateral crista and a medial crista in the stable elbow your fracture line may be incomplete complete or displaced but a milch one will have a stable elbow because the fracture goes into the lateral crista it doesn't go into the medial crista of the trochlea whereas a milch to the fracture extends far more medially and here the whole fragment makes the elbow unstable so it goes through the trochlear ridge and we have seen examples of this fracture and you should be aware that this exists though it is not seen very commonly the jacobs classification spoke about the displacement and he said that there are three types there is either a crack which means undisplaced or a split which means there is lateral opening and a tilt which means completely displaced that is stage 1 2 or 3 where the displacement is completed now the pitfall of the lateral condyle stage 1 is that you get something like this in your opd child has a fall there is a swelling in the elbow this is the plain ap x ray and this is the lateral x ray and you see something like a very faint lateral condyle crack there now you have no idea whether medially the fracture is going across the cartilage or is it going transfacial or is it stopping short of cartilage now this child was put in a plaster and after 4 weeks when he came back the fracture look sort of healed so the surgeon decided that this is okay and i will leave him alone but look at what happened over a period of time at 7 years this was a frank non union but it was in good position which means the fracture had not healed so always remember that a lateral condyle fracture the pitfall is never assume union in a supracondylar you may take it for granted that 3 to 4 weeks the fracture will unite but a lateral condyle fracture till you see radiological evidence of union on an x ray don't assume that the fracture is united which brings us to the next point never remove the pins too early till you see good healing right so always follow up a fracture till it is completely healed so let's come to the problem of visualization now see this x ray this x ray shows you the metaphyseal crack and a large soft tissue swelling on the lateral side this is obviously a type 1 fracture but i do not know this is the epiphysis of the lateral condyle this is the rest of the humerus which you are not seeing is my fracture stopping here is it going across or is it going that way i don't know what is the mursky type and then you have x rays like these now this is typical x ray taken in periphery your technician at night will take an x ray wash it the way he wants the first disaster is that you are making decisions for the child on x rays like this second disaster is taking x rays through the plaster where again you are not seeing anything now this is these are real time stories this is an x ray of a child who came to me he had all these x rays the third is somebody said digital x ray through plaster okay same plaster you can see the amount of plaster here constricting the elbow and this was the x ray and when i said no we need a plaster remove the plaster and take an x ray this is what he had okay so it is always important to take an x ray outside the plaster when you are judging a lateral condyle injury and what is more important is to take an internal rotation oblique view which is showing the plane of the fracture so never take ap lateral 
by default in your clinic make it a practice to ask for x ray ap lateral internal oblique in any elbow injury in a child and you will miss lateral condyle less otherwise this is sure to happen this paper has been published by song long ago which emphasizes the need for internal oblique x rays for diagnosis of undisplaced or minimally displaced lateral condyle on ap you might miss it something like this but when you do internal rotation you will obviously see the fracture perpendicular to the plane of the fracture which is posterior lateral going into the joint and you can diagnose it much much better so the management of fresh injuries as i pointed out depends on one how much is it displaced second is the elbow stable and third is the fragment stable now that depends on visualization of is the fracture exiting into the joint across the physis or it is stopping short what can help us an internal oblique view with the songs modification of classification which i talk about or an arthrogram or an ultrasound or an mri so this is let's go back to the first example that i showed you the type 1 fracture now this fracture with a swollen elbow what we did was you investigated right this is not the same patient but i am just giving you examples of patients that i have actually treated and seen so this is a type 1 injury an mri the parents were affording they said we would like to get an mri done and when you got an mri we saw that this fracture line is not crossing the cartilage hinge it is stopping short is going across to the medial side but it is not cutting across the joint line a lot of edema obviously here and this can easily be conserved so this is a type a stable where you can conserve it the same looking plain x ray but you look at the fragment here on mri this has gone into the joint line now when you get a fracture which goes into joint line what happens is that the synovial fluid starts seeping into the fracture fragment and it comes out from the lateral side right second thing is that in a weeks time when the child's pain subsides and the swelling subsides he starts moving his fingers when he moves his fingers with extension of the fingers the lateral condyle the extensor are all originating from there and the fragment starts moving and becoming unstable and toggling and that leads to non union which is why a type 1 which is intra articular are the more common fractures to end up with non union a type 3 fracture which is completely displaced every orthopedic surgeon can diagnose and he will never treat it non surgically so it is very unusual to find a non union because of a type 3 fracture it is always a type 1 intra articular which is missed which causes non unions right so this will not heal and it must be fixed so what i did in that patient was an arthrogram so this is to show you my approach to arthrogram for lateral condyle is not through the olecranon fossa it is through the radio capitular joint under sedation i have put a small 18 gauge needle and we have used omni pack now when i put in this dye you can see how nicely the radial head lights up and the dye has gone into the joint and it has leaked out from the fracture side laterally that tells me there is continuity between the lateral fracture and the intraarticular which means the cartilage hinge is broken and i can do dynamic testing with that when i open it up see how much it opens right so you can very clearly make out that this is an unstable situation right see the amount of dye in the gap when i do the varus valgus stress so arthrography is a very useful tool in pediatric elbow fractures especially lateral condyle to judge stability and intraarticular extension and then a simple transfixing k wire will stabilize the fragment and ensure a good healing now this is an 8 year old with an elbow injury now this is obviously a type 2 fracture because lateral side you can see this is opened up when the gap exceeds 2 mm on the lateral side and it is non parallel you can be sure that the hinge is broken right so here this is a type 2 injury which needs close reduction <coughs> with a thumb pressure directly from posterior lateral and a little valgus you can close that gap and 
that gap should be closed like that and then you have the option of fixing it with bicortical divergent pins so when you pass your pins make sure they are bicortical so that they don't end up intramedullary and unstable and keep the gap on the medial side quite wide so they have to be divergent for better fixation you can pass a third pin also and try to keep them metaphyseal and make sure that the joint is congruous that again you can do with an arthrogram so this is how you will fix it metaphyseal metaphyseal and a good dye study to see that this is congruous now if your fracture fragment has a large metaphyseal beak the pinning does not give compression so you add a plaster but the solution is to put a compression screw so a 4 mm compression screw in the metaphyseal region this need not be bicortical you can have a long enough screw which gives good purchase and compression so that there is the requirement for plaster duration may be lesser but it will always need a surgery for removal of this screw at a second stage whereas the pins can be left outside the skin and can be pulled out on the opd basis is a, that is the difference but this screw will always give better compression some people prefer burying the pins and removing them by another surgery so that it does not irritate but long term studies on both methods have shown no difference the only problem with leaving pins outside is that you must take good pin track care and that is why a cast for minimum 6 weeks is important so that the pins don't move you cannot allow range of motion with the pin inside when the skin starts moving the pins start becoming loose and can get infected which is a disadvantage so it's better that you must see callus and you remove the pins before you mobilize so this is an example where there is a large metaphyseal fragment and you can put a compression screw what about type 3 type 3 diagnosis is never a dilemma this is a pretty straightforward diagnosis everybody can diagnose this is completely displaced and the gold standard is an open reduction when you do an open reduction the common method is to do a dead lateral approach but dissect anteriorly from the capsule don't touch the extensor origin which supplies blood don't go posteriorly from where the end artery comes dissect anteriorly go to the fracture trochlear groove make sure that you have good reduction and then put your pins and post op x ray and then a plaster and then make sure that you have achieved radiological union before you remove those pins but do you always need to open that is the question this is an example one patient which i treated long ago now this is february 2013 if you can see on x ray song had published that you can attempt a close reduction with arthrographic control with a joystick method so this is what we did so i put a k wire into the fragment and we just levered that rotated fragment back into its position and then i put the pins and checked with the arthrogram that my joint line congruency is good and that is how we treated this child and that went on to a satisfactory union with a very good range of motion so this paper again has been published close reduction and internal fixation in displaced and rotated that is type 3 fractures by a percutaneous joystick derotation maneuver everybody who is interested in trying this should go and read this paper before we start doing it so in his series of 24 patients he found that he could be successful closed in 75% that is two thirds patients easily he could get a closed reduction and pinning and he had excellent result in 94% whereas 25% patients will still need an open reduction and fixation so he published his new classification which is of use to all of us now closed reduction and internal fixation for displaced fractures <clears throat> so what you should know about song's classification is that there are five stages of displacement so type 1 is an incomplete crack so you have a limited fracture line in the metaphysis and on all four views it is the same and this is stable whereas stage 2 is that there is a la slight lateral gap which is opened up in all four views and here we don't know whether the fracture stable or unstable it is undefinable because we don't know whether the hinge is broken or not 
in stage 3 of displacement the gap laterally and medially is equivalent so what i was trying to tell you earlier if there is lateral opening but the gap laterally is less and medially uh, sorry gap, gap laterally is more and medially it is less there is a chance that hinge is intact and it is stable but the gap if it is equal medially and laterally that means hinge is broken but this is very very individual you can't really judge on that x ray small gaps like 2 mm and an arthrogram is a usually a better way of finding out what's happening so the first stage of what was the jacobs classification is stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 of song stage 4 is type 2 where it is displaced but there is no rotation of the fragment it is unstable and 5 is complete rotation which is totally unstable so this is the new song classification and the treatment depends on that stage 1 you can just treat a cast stage 2 again if it is stable you can treat in a cast or in situ stabilization stage 3 reduction and pinning stage 4 and 5 obviously reduction and pinning and 5 if failed close reduction go for open reduction so these are two important slides what about the late presentation so that was about the primary treatment what about late presentations so what is a repairable late presentation now if you define it there is no actual definition this is my thought again either it displaces late because initially you misinterpreted stability you thought it is a stable and in a weeks time it has displaced or the patient has come to you late because he did not uh, come to a doctor first or the doctor did not identify it why do the late displacements happen i told you misinterpretation of stability either milch to or a type 1b fracture which is intraarticular now that leads to delayed union and this has been again well published and research that poor circulation to metaphyseal fragment bearing of the fracture site by articular fluid which inhibits fibrin and callus formation and constant tension on the extensors arising from the condylar fragment leads to displacement now the controversy was whether elbow function can be improved by a late open reduction or will there be chance of avn because that is what we are worried about in late presentation and stiffness so if you cause an extensive soft tissue dissection to free the fragment and try to achieve an accurate intraarticular reduction there will be intraarticular fibrosis and avn chances are more especially if you dissect too much posteriorly haraldson has demonstrated that the vessels that supply the lateral condyle penetrate in a small non articular area from the posterior so all your dissection must essentially be anterior jacob and falls in a very old paper wrote that after 3 weeks a lot of patients who had open reduction when they came late they lost about 34 degrees of range of motion with common problems of avn and <coughs> facial arrhythmia but this was a very old paper today a non union or a or a late presentation is defined as if the fracture has not united by 3 months that is 12 weeks it is it should be classified as a non union some people say 20 weeks some people say 12 weeks and they have advised early surgery for these cases when the fragment is in relatively good position right but successful treatment has been documented from between 9 months to 3 years so this is an example of a case where the fracture has come late and what you do is do not try to dissect intraarticular just stabilize the lateral column when you stabilize the lateral column percutaneously the irritation caused by the screw and compression itself causes union and the intraarticular does not really matter in late cases they get a very good range of motion whereas dissecting the fragment and trying to get anatomic reduction has higher chances of avascular necrosis recently myself taral and premal have published this in igo in the december volume of percutaneous in situ stabilization for non unions you can go and read that igo paper which will soon be out in print uh, so fractures can be stabilized by minimal extra articular dissection and a combination of screw if there is a gap you can place a lateral bone graft on the pillar but don't try to dissect intraarticular so enter from the fracture line proximally dissect anteriorly use a compression screw confirm articular alignment and even delayed presentations will do reasonably well 
this is another example a type 2 day 1 was undisplaced you can see that this was treated in a plaster but you can see the gap being equal large swelling here what had to happen happened at 3 weeks it was completely displaced so this is the patient a lateral incision and minimal extra articular dissection don't go into the joint to dissect and make it anatomic the pillar has to be roughened on the non union side put a percutaneous screw just press it into place and a screw fixation or a k wire fixation whatever you want sometimes you get really delayed presentations where the fragment is completely rotated now such cases you cannot treat percutaneously you have to open reduce because this is unstable and the articular surface is facing the wrong side so this will need proper open reduction and derotation of the fragment and then stabilization with a screw that is a compression screw again you can use an arthrographic solution to look at the medial joint line rather than dissecting too much into it so that is how this was stabilized so again enter from the fracture proximally on the pillar go anteriorly compression screw or a bi cortical divergent k wire and confirm articular alignment that is important all right uh, the next thing all right so so even more delayed presentation so in our country we get patients very very late so late established pseudarthrosis or non unions what do they present with so there are three or four clinical scenarios either they come to you for a deformity that is cubitus valgus which is progressive with instability or they come with tardy ulna no palsy okay causing deficit on the little finger and the ring finger with numbness or they will come with pain and instability because the elbow is unstable and cannot do heavy activity so late non unions will come with these three problems and your treatment is not to restore anatomy but to treat what is the problem so how do we treat the late presentation open reduction has poor results again the same what has been published they lose a lot of range and they they can end up with avascular necrosis so if you don't fix the non union what do we treat so if you have the first situation where you have a very good range of motion the deformity is not much the instability is not there the palsy is not there so this is what i told you non union in good position what do you do percutaneous in situ stabilization with extra articular bone graft is required okay this is an example 6 year old boy conserved earlier went into non union so in situ stabilization and that is how it healed over a period of time you don't have to worry too much situation 2 where you have good range of motion but there is a mask fraction deformity the deformity is acceptable the instability is absent but the patient's complaint is tardy ulna no palsy now when you have a stable elbow with good range of motion and the problem is palsy you can ignore the non union and just do an anterior transposition of the nerve so we are treating the problem and not trying to treat the non union <coughs> now the third scenario where you have a deformity which is unacceptable it is also contributing to weakness instability and causing palsy so in this situation the treatment is going to be an osteotomy especially if the deformity exceeds 30 degrees with or without ulna no transposition but we are not bothered about the non union we leave it as it is because some range of motion is coming from the non union also sometimes if there is tenderness on the lateral column you may put a intra uh, uh, fragmentary interfragmentary compression screw which i will show you so this is an example where we have done an osteotomy a medial closing wedge osteotomy the same bone which was removed was used as a graft on the lateral side and i put a bi column fixation and we don't bother about what is there intra articular so deformity correction and bi column stabilization and that is is 
extension that is its flexion and very good stability so when you have instability you must fix the non union but when you fix the non union do not try to go for intra articular alignment just fix the column so osteosynthesis in c2 with a plate with a screw with a bone graft depending on the situation so to summarize early non unions which are delayed presentations or displacements can be treated by anatomic repair and how you dissect is important long standing non unions more than 3 months if they are static asymptomatic you can observe if they are progressive and disabling you try for non anatomic repair in situ fixation with or without graft on the lateral column if osteotomy if deformity exceeds 20 30 degrees do an osteotomy which is metaphyseal and ulna no transfer may or may not be needed some do's and don'ts and at the end some messages don't miss an unstable fracture don't compromise on imaging modalities do an internal oblique x ray do an arthrogram do ultrasound if your friend is good at it do an mri if the patient can afford never assume union you must demonstrate radiological union if you are going to do delayed dissection don't dissect posteriorly if it is over 6 months don't try to do open reduction at all just fix the lateral column do try closed manipulation and arthrography it is very simple do try to use a compression screw whenever possible do follow up till radiological union and in established long non unions try to give customized solutions and not anatomic solution so good imaging confirmation of stability stabilize when in doubt and careful about dissection and late presentation treat the problem not the fracture so i thank you for your attention and we'll take questions on this topic very nice presentation dr sandeep yeah so if and... there are any questions about uh, uh, the lateral condyle i am happy to discuss and answer so that everybody goes back very clear on what we are talking actually this topic is very new and dear to me because i did the dissertation on lateral humeral condyle in 1988 and 89 okay wonderful so the, those were different days oh uh, may i read out my conclusions uh, i want to know i am curious whether they stand true today okay also. sure okay so my conclusion yeah. that time where uh <coughs> all displaced fracture should be treated by prompt open reduction and internal fixation Mm -hmm. early surgery alone doesn't ensure a good result unless the reduction is merely anatomical yeah smooth smooth k wires is the preferred method of fixation in children while screw fixation is useful in adults minimum yeah. of two pins are necessary through and rotation of the fragment divergent pin preferably from the posterior lateral surface in a manner of v v yields good results minimum of soft tissue dissection and muscle stripping should be done during operation to prevent avn and further complications like non union cubitus valgus also the wires through the center of epiphysis doesn't cause much growth disturbance early surgery is advised for established non unions where the condylar fragment is in good condition <coughs> delayed open reduction internal fixation while still leaving much to be desired does result in improvement in stability and function of the elbow Yeah. Open reduction and internal fixation of fractures up to six weeks after injury is recommended, and fractures over six weeks of duration are best left alone with active physiotherapy as the results become progressively disappointing with delay. Yeah. So some of the points that you have raised even in 1980 are valid today, but we have moved towards better imaging, better understanding of stability, uh, yes. better uh, use of uh, our pins. and uh, understanding that it is the non unions are not because of type 2 and 3 which are always treated by open or closed methods and we have this new method of trying to do percutaneous fixations so dr yes. sadaf and dr gopendra have some questions uh, can you sir, please uh, unmute and yes, ask sir, yeah sir i'm gopendra yeah you yeah, can you yeah uh, yes i can sir. hear you yes so uh, the question was the same like doctor previous doctor just explained something that only yeah. till how 
much duration means after injury so so like i said dr flynn has classified non unions or repairable non unions up to 12 weeks that is 3 months extended yes, extendable yes. some people have published up to 20 weeks okay but again yes, they have simultaneously demonstrated that when you have a non union which is or a late presentation more than 12 weeks to 20 weeks if the fragments are not rotated they are in good position stabilizing yes, percutaneously with a compression screw is adequate you do not need to do those open reductions trying to get absolute articular alignment the function is okay. good and pillar stability mm-hmm. prevents further migration and cubitus valgus okay whereas okay. trying to dissect intraarticular may cause avn and stiffness mm-hmm. so if your mm-hmm. patient comes to you 3 weeks 4 weeks down the line and it is a type 3 i showed you an example a type 3 mm-hmm. neglected rotated fragment obviously you will have to do open reduction mm-hmm. a type 2 you will have to do but try to do it with anterior dissection and don't go too much posterior if it is in good position mm-hmm. fragment with a non union which is radiological mm-hmm. put a in situ screw don't try to do anatomic reductions it is not required okay sir yeah okay sir so and one thing what uh, yeah, can uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, can can you share video for the uh, technique of orthogram and its interpretation because it's very useful and uh, we are not yes it is to... very useful i will try to put up the video on the youtube channel of arthrography i have a small presentation i'll put that on arthrogram so it will take some time see all of us are having a mental picture of the distal humerus only thing is yeah. on a child only lateral condyle is seen nothing else is seen okay mm. I, so there are two techniques either you have to inject posterior laterally next to the olecranon into the fossa and then okay. the dye has to be spread by motion or then okay. i put a from because sometimes what happens is that if this dye leaks out here no there is smudging and you may not uh, be able to define the anatomy so what i mm. try to do is i just put percutaneously under siam between the radial head and the capitulum and inject dye directly laterally and that okay. leaks out nicely and you will see you will see the anatomy do it a few times see omni pack mm. or urographin are the dyes which are used i prefer okay. omni pack because it stays longer all of them are water soluble okay. i haven't had reaction in 15 years to any patient and that washes off within one or two hours you don't see it in your post op x ray also but they are very very useful in a lot of cases where transfacial separation i'll talk about trash lesions next in that also arthrography is a very useful concept all of you in your practice should keep io exol in your ot cost 300 rupees for a while you need 1 cc plus 1 cc saline dilution 2 cc syringe don't use too much otherwise the whole thing becomes black and uh, do it, do it gently you will get it and i'll i'll put that uh, presentation up okay sir that's yeah, a new uh, yes sir just one please one question more please sir Uh, yeah. So this uh, this radio capitular uh, injection you use for yeah. supracondylar nucleus and other things also. No, no, supracondylar. No, supracondylar is a metaphyseal fracture. You don't need to do it. But a radial head fracture, a radial neck fracture, epicondylar fractures. Okay, yeah, sometimes yeah, some from. some sometimes you have something called as a transfacial separation. I'll talk yes, about sir. that. You will see the examples in the trash lecture. Okay, fine, sir. Okay. Fine, sir. Thank you. Any other questions, Doctor Sada? Um, Doctor Sandeep, thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm audible or not. Am I audible? Uh, yeah, you are audible. Okay. Uh, I had a couple of uh, questions regarding the metaphyseal screw. Uh, well, yeah. Um, yeah. the only uh, issue, like when I'm working with my consultant, the only concern he has is is that if you're putting a metaphyseal screw, it causes the fissure. So technically or theoretically, speaking, it causes. Oh, sorry. Is, It passes through the fossas, right? So no, 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 I mean, no, 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 no. It doesn't. That's what I said in the beginning. You must have a Thurston Holland fragment. The screw is metaphysis to metaphysis. Okay. You are not. So are you not- are not putting the screw transfacial. Your screw must be. So you must have a large enough fragment. Sometimes you have a metaphysial fragment which is large enough to take a screw. That so is when you is use the. Me- Otherwise, a bicortical divergent pin is adequate. Okay. 
so what is the direction of the screw that you keep like in which direction posterolateral posterolateral to anteromedial Okay. Um, the other thing is is that you mentioned the size of four millimeters. So does the size vary according to the age of the patient? Yes. The problem is yeah. that we do not have. Some people are selling Herbert screws, which are headless screws. Okay, which are two point seven, but that is very very flimsy. I have not found found them useful. And most of the lateral condyle fractures, you can put a four mm metaphyseal uh, this uh, cannulated cancellous screw. So that's without a uh, washer, right? Without a washer, it's a holding Zero. screw. You see, you do not really have to crush cartilage or hold it. Uh, that is why even bicortical is not needed. What you need uh, is, that... is what you need is lateral column stability. Um, so that was my other question because uh, what uh, what we have been conventionally thought is is that the articular uh, reduction is what matters the most and it is not the metaphyseal compression that is always required. So like there are uh, two schools of thought. Some of them are really concerned about doing that compression of that metaphyseal fragment that looks good on the on the X ray, and uh, like the other school just says. A bi bicortical wire without compression is enough because there is a lot of cartilage there, so you really do not need to compress the cartilage, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. would not see the compression there. Uh, Correct. So you do okay. not need to compress so much. You just need purchase in the metaphysis. Other question was that you mentioned that we can keep an extra articular graft in cases of yes. uh, non -union. if there is a gap uh, early, on the column, early non unions. So if you're yeah. putting an extra articular graft, what are the chances of graft migration and what are the chances of heterotropic ossification? I mean, in zero. general, speaking zero. about... No, zero. Because zero. first thing I said, if you are listening, is that if the fragments are in good position, you don't need graft. Yeah. Yeah. When the fragments are in good position and there is no gap, you do not need a graft. The second mm -hmm. thing is that what you are imagining as a graft is not a tricortical graft. Once you stabilize, if you feel that there is a lateral defect from the olecranon fossa, some cancellous bone, or even the callus which is on the lateral column can be scraped off and put there as a graft. So it is there is no big graft which is going to migrate anywhere. Uh, one last question is uh, that you mentioned that we have to wait until uh, there is a radiological union. So what yes. do you define as yes. a radiological union? Because like we said, you, you know, will see trabecular graft. going across. You will see either callus or trabecular across. Okay. And so just what, what I'm saying, yeah, what I am also trying to say is that it is important to follow up your patient with a lateral condyle for longer period than supracondylar and make sure that three months, six months down the line, you demonstrate radiological union before you say no need to show me. Okay, one more thing I will tell you, all the patients with lateral condyle, whether you conserve or whether you operate, will have a lateral bump. Whenever there is bone healing and hyperemia, the lateral condyle hypertrophies. And most of them will come to you with a pseudovirus. Actual virus is not there, but you will see a lateral periosteal reaction and a bump, which they will always come and complain that this is a prominent or bada big. Okay, a lot of studies have been done. Literature has said it happens with, means it, it is not surgery which is responsible. Even conservative treatment, you will see the same thing happening. Okay, One last so you period. have to just, you have to just wait. It will improve with time. Nothing needs to be done. Uh, one last question regarding the timing of removal of the screws. Is there any particular time that we need to uh, wait or it uh, just depends on uh, union radiologically? Union, yeah, radiological union. Once you are sure it has healed, you can take it off. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sandeep. Thanks yeah. for the wonderful presentation. Yeah. 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 Good, good evening, sir. May I? Yeah, please. Yeah, Dr. Pradeep here, sir. Actually, usually I have done eight to nine cases of this. In our mm -hmm. institute, we follow uh, K wire only, not screw. So yeah. usually we bury the screw inside the skin. Out yeah. of that, uh, in three to four cases, we started actually early mobilization because on table, it was very stable and all this with 3K wires diverging. So okay. in that three cases, I found actually they have good ROM than uh, the other patient in which we have uh, started mobilization after one month. Later, so, yeah. 
So is That's it a, advisable? On yeah, table? I see, see, couple of things. The screw or buried pins ensure that stability is better at earlier stage, so that you can start mobilizing them early. Yeah. If your pins are outside, you are going to wait longer mm-hmm. till you see some callous reaction, because you need to remove the pins. <laughs> People have tried mobilization with pins outside, like supracondylar, and yeah. when they start moving, you no, know, the child has pain and irritation. And okay. there is serious discharge, and that can get infected. Pins become loose eventually. Okay. So if you are doing percutaneous extraarticular pin, uh, sorry, uh, pins are outside the skin, no, then it is better to give plaster for about six weeks at least till you see some callus. And when okay. you remove the pins after you mobilize, you will still tell the child, please do active range of motion. For God's sake, nobody of you should send a pediatric elbow to a physiotherapist. Okay, because they are in a big hurry to mobilize and they force and cause myositis. I have had patients with supracondylars who have had a refracture, the lateral condyle which is just precarious healing, they will break it open. So don't send to physiotherapist. Tell the patients to be pa- a patient, <laughs> the parents, and do active range of motion over a period of time. They will get back their range. So around after two three months, they will get almost yes, normal. Yes. Yes, okay. yes. You have to wait. It's not a yes. supracondylar. Yes. It's intraarticular. One more question. Uh, you told that, that there will be lateral bump. Yeah. So most of the time, when we are uh, removing the wires, that time will open. So yeah. Is it uh, okay to remove that bump or just? It will come back. back. It will come back. The more you play around on the lateral column and dissect, it okay. comes back. Okay. Okay. Then so not to what you that. are, you have to just counsel the parents. A lot mm-hmm. of talking is required. Okay. Yes, when sir. you when you are doing lat- that's what I was saying. Lateral condyle actually is only seventeen percent of the cases. Okay. Supracondylar is seventy five percent of the cases of an elbow fracture in child. That is a but you have to spend so much time, energy, and effort on a lateral condyle compared to a supracondylar. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Patil, sir, last question, and then Hi. we'll move to the yeah. next stop. Yes, yes. Uh, regarding uh, two points. Sometimes we have found the metaphyseal comminution, so not amenable yeah. to even put a K wire. So we have to okay. go through the uh, physis only sometimes. Yeah, and Some, yeah thing, those are rare situations. You might be forced to do things depending on the situation sometimes. And regarding the compression, it is the transverse wire that adds more to the uh, compression, which yeah. I have found. And previously, yeah. used to bury inside, uh, take it a little bit out, bend it, and... Uh, Punch, punch it, punch, punch it. it, yeah, ha, punch yeah. it, and then you to get a good compression. And then you, yeah, will, yeah. because so, if you put the KR outside, that that never come through the incision site. If we have to take yeah. another incision for the KR to accommodate. So yeah. that is another so, problem. All these are valid points. The thing is, the more you get along with your practice and experience, no, you will realize the small, small. What we are trying to do is make your mind aware of the tips, uh, whatever traps and uh, problems in lateral condyle, and possible solutions. But individual situations will vary. Any one right. of virus, virus, stress, X-rays? Uh, so in a child, no, in a child, in a child is doing, yeah, so. See, so I did not elaborate on conservative treatment in detail. When you are doing a type, so what is my approach today? When I get a patient of elbow fracture, we take elbow X-ray, AP lateral internal oblique. On the internal oblique view, when we confirm there is a lateral condyle fracture, we look at the soft tissue swelling. How much is the soft tissue swelling? Second, we look at the medial gap and lateral gap on the plane X-ray. Okay, and Give the child a plaster. Yeah. I give a what we call as a delta soft cast, which is a removable plaster fiber cast, which d- does not need a cutter. You just peel it off later. So it is immobilization of the soft kind. Call the child back after one week. When the swelling has subsided and child has started moving the fingers, we take another X-ray. Here we need not take off the plaster because that allows excellent X-ray through the plaster. It's translucent. If there is no displacement, we will continue with the plaster. If the plaster is too loose, we will change the plaster to a well-fitting plaster and call the child at three weeks. So one X-ray at one week, one X-ray at three weeks. 
इफ यू आर यूजिंग अ ट्रांसलूसन फाइबर प्लास्टर प्लास्टर में से एक्सरे नहीं तो इफ इट इज जिप्सोन आर टेक आउट द प्लास्टर एंड देन टेक द एक्सरे If it is not displacing and you are seeing soft callus, it is unlikely to displace after the third week. So you are safe, but you will still continue the plaster for six weeks and then only start range of motion. That is complete conservative treatment. At any time, at one week or three week, if we find it is separating out, you can do percutaneous in situ stabilization. No need to dissect because these are undisplaced type ones. right here probably the metaphyseal beak sorry the intraarticular uh, uh, cartilage was cracked or broken and that is why it has not healed or started separating so you have to stabilize the column so that it doesn't progress the idea is to stop that metaphyseal uh, fluid leak into the fracture and stabilize it so it heals up that's it type 2 okay. type 3 reduce it and fix thank you it. closed All right. So, Ashok, uh, shall we move to the next one? Uh, sir, can I ask one question, please, sir? Yeah, uh, you can ask. Sir, uh, sir, sir, can't we put in fresh cases? Can't we put uh, compression screw? Uh, you can. I do put it for in. Epi five is only. No, no epi five is only. Only epi five, sir. For articular. That's what I'm saying. Compression. Theoretically, a trans epi fission screw is not a very good idea because of the possibilities okay. of facial arrest and. but if it's a just a positioning screw it is still okay people have done it without any complications okay but those are anecdotal and i will not actively recommend that go and do that no three through only epiphysis not crossing the physis but that's what i'm saying the column needs to be stabilized what you are telling me is a transverse screw right yes yes sir yeah so yes, the sir. fracture line is oblique it's posterior yeah. lateral to antero medial so just a transverse screw may not stabilize the column correctly okay okay yeah yes sir yes sir. all right so can you see the screen yes sir yeah yeah sir enigmatic elbow yeah yeah sir yeah we can see sir all right all right so i will just speak about various other fractures okay so always it's an enigma when the child comes fall on the outstretched hand swollen stiff elbow you get an x ray done and your mind is tuned to these two fractures which i already spoke about supracondylar or lateral condyle that is 75% and 17% okay which makes it 93% okay 92% but the remaining 8% of the fractures you will not know what is happening unless you know what to look for right eyes don't see what the mind does not know so it's important that you should know what to look for now this is a group of lesions where people have called is trash lesion okay this word comes from garbage or trash where people used to see a x ray say isme kuch nahi hai and kachre ke dabbe mein dal do okay trash lesions the word was coined by peter waters from boston and i think the paper was published in 2012 okay we have published a recent paper on the same in igo last year i have written about it you can again go to igo and read that paper or i'll put it up on the group so what does a trash lesion mean a swollen elbow with a innocuous or normal looking x ray so let me show some cases this is a 9 year old boy who came to the opd he had a painful elbow and he was unable to extend it fully he was an athlete who was doing training to be a boxer and this was his x ray now the previous surgeon had seen this and had told him there is no fracture you can go away and he came after 3 months saying that he has pain and cannot function so normally we make this interactive but since we don't have too much time i'll just point out here what happened was whenever you see such x rays it's important that you draw the lines when you draw the radio capitular line on the lateral x ray you find that the radial head is lying posterior to the midpoint of the capitulum and if you see very very closely you see a small flake of bone there so we got a ct scan done and we found that this is a radial head osteochondral fracture with posterior subluxation of the radial rest of the radius right so what happens is that part of the cartilage and bone remains here and the rest of the shaft and the head 
has subluxated. This was his intraoperative photograph. There was already an erosion on the radial head because it was a delayed presentation. And we had to do an open reduction and we fixed it with a Herbert screw and brought the head back to position where it belongs. That is the on table uh, uh, video showing the location of the head and the screw fixation. This is how it looked. These are the images. And this is the radio capitular line being restored. And that is his function. Three. At the end of three months, he got back his full flexion and extension. And yeah, he was happened. back to his boxing. <coughs> and he became completely all right and is back to sport. In fact, he recently won some medals somewhere. And this is a five-year follow-up. Today, he has become a national boxer. That screw eventually became loose and I did another surgery to remove it. But he continues to function and he's playing the game that he likes. So this is his long follow-up of a radial head osteochondral. So this is another case, a three-year-old patient, swollen elbow with restricted supination. Same situation, plain X-ray looked normal, but on an MRI, what do you see? You see that the unossified radial head is lying outside the star. Okay, instead of lying where it belongs. So this was a complete type 1 salter where the entire head was extruded. And what you are seeing, the arrow here is the metaphysical fragment. Whereas the radial head was lying outside. You have to remember radial head ossifies at 5 years of age. So clinical examination and high index of suspicion is very important when you have a disproportionately swollen elbow and a normal looking x-ray. First thing is additional investigation is mandatory. Don't ever trash it. Don't say this is a uh, X-ray. Be kuch nahi hai, ghar pe jao. Okay, this was a radial neck fracture with dislocation. Now this is a third case. A five-year-old child. This was his X-ray, and this was thought to be a medial epicondyle injury. All right, this is. The fragment that is seen here and this is the fragment on the normal side. So comparative x-rays are very useful and this looked like a medial epicondylar fracture. But what happened over a period of time? The next thing at three months, this was treated with observation. Okay, The surgeon chose to conserve it. After three months, he was not better. In fact, you can see that the fragment size has increased. Okay, the diameter of the fragment looks bigger with some ossification here. Now, an epicondylar fracture cannot change its size. Right? And what happened is that this was metaphysical ossification. And somebody's uh, voice is, hello, can you mute yourself? Can somebody mute themselves? There is somebody talking in the background. Ashok? Hello. Hello, can you mute yourself? Dr. Sivanand, the mic is on. Dr. Sivanand. Can you mute yourself, Dr. Sivanand? Tell me, it's a light. It's a light. It's a light. Ashok, can you mute the participants, please? Okay. Let me proceed. So, the true diagnosis is a medial condyle fracture, right? A medial epicondyle fracture does not happen in a five-year-old. Please remember that anything on the medial side in eight years or less should be diagnosed as a medial condyle fracture. We just spoke about lateral condyle fractures. We forget that the entire medial condyle is cartilaginous. I just pointed out that only the ossification center of the lateral side is seen. The entire medial condyle ossifies quite late. So you can have a complete medial condyle which is lying outside and only the metaphysical spike or the Thurston Holland fragment may be seen and you may mistake it for the epicondyle, right? So this is how it healed with bad cubitus varus and a stiff elbow. This was poor function two years later with 
a bad result. So medial condyle fractures are again the next trash lesions. You can see this child, a large medial swelling, soft tissue, small bony flake here, but an arthrogram shows a big fragment. The entire condyle has rotated and is lying outside. This will always need an open reduction and repositioning with fixation. It is just the cartilaginous part which is not seen. So you must be aware that any medial ossification in less than eight is a medial condyle fracture unless proved otherwise. Another example, a five-year-old child, large swelling on the medial side, a small metaphyseal flake here. Okay, and look at what the MRI shows. The entire medial condyle lying outside. Okay, half the lower humerus is lying outside. So this will require an open reduction and don't miss this trash lesion. So the key point is a medial epicondyle fracture, less than eight or nine, should be diagnosed as a medial condyle unless proven otherwise. It's not that you cannot get, but always keep your mind open for a medial condylar fracture. The fourth trash lesion is something like this. Now, neonates or very young kids are usually diagnosed with elbow dislocation for this condition. Okay, but this is actually a transficial separation. The entire distal humerus is sometimes unossified, especially at birth. And you will be called saying that child's elbow is swollen and x-ray shows elbow dislocation. Now, the difference between an elbow dislocation and a transficial separation is that an elbow dislocation is always posterior lateral, never medial. Second, here the radius ulna will never lose their alignment. They are all together, congruent. And the whole chunk moves medially. Okay, so that is the giveaway that this is a transficial separation. Okay, this is the lateral condyle where it should be aligned to the radial head. So this is a transficial separation and here again arthrogram can be useful. So you reduce it like a supracondylar if it is displaced and the arthrogram shows you that it has come back because only that will show you the cartilage. And then you can put a couple of pins and stabilize it. Okay, or you can use very thin pins and stabilize it. That is how you treat it. So normally you should know that the line from passing from the center of the radial head and the shaft should bisect the lateral condyle in the center in any view, AP lateral oblique. Elbow dislocation is posterior lateral and the alignment between the head of the radius and the lateral condyle is disrupted. Lateral condyle fracture is, there is disruption of the center of the capitulum from the radial head in type three. Supracondylar, all relations are maintained because it is metaphyseal and transficial, the alignment is maintained, but everything goes medially. These are the clues for you. This is another example, a swollen elbow and a normal looking X-ray. So this was again discarded as being normal, contusion of the elbow and sent away with a slab. And this is what he came with. This was a very proximal ulnar fracture with radial head subluxation laterally, which was not seen on the first X-ray. It was very, very subtle. And when you see the X-ray very close up, you can see that there was a spiral fracture here, which was missed and in a slab with activity, it got displaced. And that ended up with a cubitus varus deformity. So a Montagia, which is proximal, also called as a Hume's fracture, is another trash lesion. Now this 10 year old, now see this child is an older child. Now you can see, obviously this is a lateral, a medial epicondylar fracture. Even here you can see trochlea is not yet ossified. But this is a lot of soft tissue edema. And here again an arthrogram may help. It has been now made very clear with newer studies that a CT will give you a better idea of displacement of the medial epicondyle than a plain X-ray. And a CT always shows that the medial epicondyle with its growth plate is usually flipped because it's an avulsion fracture. And this can be associated with an elbow dislocation. So you have an avulsion of the medial epicondyle, elbow dislocates and relocates. Sometimes the fragment can get entrapped. I'll show you that case also. So this is an arthrogram which shows you that the condyle is intact. This is an epicondylar fracture and 
this is the valgus stress which shows you medial opening and then you stabilize it with either a suture anchor or a compression screw because this is a again a avulsion fracture rather than using a, a k wire which does not give compression it is better to use a compression screw <coughs> and uh, stabilize this is typically i see this injury in a lot of wrestlers in pune we have this balewadi stadium where young children come for sports training and lot of wrestlers from western maharashtra come and this is a very common injury that in their uh, wrestling when they are doing uh, uh, their dao page the elbow gets pulled and they get a medial epicondyle fracture and they are completely disabled because they can't do sport after that and i've had a uh, quite a few non unions so athletic child always fix it though literature has said up to 6 mm displacement can be conserved but i feel it's an avulsion fracture and fixation gives superior results now this is another interesting case this came 7 months post injury what i pointed out earlier the lateral looks okay on the medial there is some bone here on the inside and there is no epicondyle seal so this was an elbow dislocation and it got reduced and the entire medial epicondyle was trapped inside so incarcerated fragment this is very very important for you to know because a missed incarceration can lead into elbow arthritis so this is a mri showing you the piece inside the joint the trap fragment has to be excised and arthrolysis may be needed if it is a late presentation now this case you can see when i opened the ulnar nerve was also inside so when you reduce an elbow dislocation in a child be very careful that you are not injuring or incarcerating the medial epicondyle on the x ray you should be careful or when the reduction maneuver is done sometimes the radial neck can also fracture two things that can happen so this was the ulnar nerve into the joint on opening which i had to remove and bring out and then the medial epicondylar piece was re restored and a screw was put to restore the compression another example of a large medial epicondylar chunk with metaphysis this is completely rotated and cannot be accepted in this way so somebody left it alone and this is how it heals so callus does form but it will always be in a non anatomic position and if it is rotated your elbow flexor function is not very good an open reduction put the fragment back and a compression screw is a good idea now this example again this we have already discussed you can see epiphysis is here large lateral swelling but the direction of epiphysis doesn't look too good and what is it internal oblique view what does it show a lateral condyle so ap lateral can be always tricky arthrogram showing the entire lateral condyle turned around closed reduction and stabilization type 1 lateral condyle treated in a cast ended up with non union fixation now again we went through these cases so i will not waste time here <clears throat> now this is another case this is a adolescent or a pre adolescent injury an elbow injury again this came to me 2 months after injury seen by an arthroplasty surgeon in town and was told on this x ray that this is normal gave a slab and sent home saying elbow contusion he came back with a painful stiff elbow just taking a better lateral x ray and we see that this was a shear fracture of the capitulum okay a proper x ray was what was needed the capitulum was obliquely sheared off and a ct will confirm that and this was treated with an open reduction and anterior to posterior herbert screws to restore the stability and alignment and that went to good healing another case a 10 year old national swimmer with posterior lateral elbow instability these were his x rays every time he used to do his swimming strokes his radial head used to pop out and he was demonstrating that instability so this is another interesting situation you can see here a posterior sliver of the lateral condyle so this is again a very rare injury but you should know about it a shear injury of the lateral condyle which is which has the attachment of the capsule to it 
so it did not heal it was in non union and the capsule was loose so in hyper extension when he used to do his swimming strokes the radial head used to subluxate when i opened it you can see this was the fragment come off from here this was the crater and this was in non union so we had to roughen this make it raw put it back and put herbert's screws and then that has healed nicely and his stability is restored so to summarize trash lesions are a group of osteochondral injuries which if treated insufficiently will always have long term problems you need to diagnose by knowing that they exist high suspicion and additional imaging all of them are displaced unstable and all of them will need surgery they cannot be treated conservatively additional imaging could be ultrasound mri or arthrogram depending on availability affordability and experience okay everything has got its uh, flip side so you should know what to use when so don't ever trash a swollen elbow with a normal looking x ray follow him up get additional investigation and be ready for surgical intervention please read this paper <coughs> published first time by uh, peter waters and james casser called as elbow trash which are osteochondral fractures with joint incongruity radial head anterior compression with subluxation which i showed you subtle montage of fracture dislocation which i showed you lateral condylar shear and avulsion which i showed you unossified medial condylar fractures which i showed you unossified transfascial separations entrapped medial epicondylar and complex fracture dislocations be aware of the ossification pattern because that will tell you how to pick up these injuries you will always see the lateral condyle in very young children except at birth radial head sometime between 3 and 5 medial epicondyle then trochlea comes very late so medial condyle is seen quite late ulna olecranon later that takes time and lateral epicondyle is the last okay so be aware of this and update your knowledge thank you very much so any questions on this yeah gopendra uh, sir do you always uh, put a screw for medial epicondyle fracture medial or epicondyle yes my choice is always yes. a screw because i think it's avulsion fracture we need to compress that yes. nicely kvas tend to become yes. loose and it may end up with fibrous non union so irrespective of age you put always a screw yes i would like to use a screw all the time that's my personal choice people okay. are putting kvas but they don't give compression okay. but the whole purpose of this talk is these are extremely unusual injuries but you have to know that they exist every time you see an x ray don't always think it's supracondylar or lateral condyle look at the trash lesions type 1 is also a trash lesion in lateral condyle because you don't see it well yeah pradeep jadhav has raised his hand no all right uh is the pulled elbow included in trash lesions because many pulled elbow people... is no yeah as pulled elbow sir is not really a trash lesion because it's clinically so evident that this is a pulled elbow there will be the history of a little tug and the hand is in pronation and the minute you supinate there is a pop and it child is completely normal we haven't seen a pulled elbow not getting reduced or remaining subluxated i haven't seen it it's always reducible because the child But, is not able to see where is it exactly pinning he might point no, so, to the shoulder correct the so as we exactly so like i said any child who is young and has a, has the history that he was being lifted by the hand or some traction injury sometimes they land on the forearm and hand twists but the attitude is very typical of being in pronation crying and a normal looking x ray and a little traction pressure on the radial head and supination you will feel a small sound and after 5 minute child is happily laughing so pulled elbow i think is a very classic clinical entity it is not an osteochondral lesion it's the slippage of the annular ligament from uh, the head of the radius and that causes that but yeah you have to be aware of it 
Now you are most of the times you are aware that is a cold elbow, but if yeah. you reduce weight, the patient will not pay you. If no, you no, so and, <laughs> and then do the yeah. No, so but my thing is, uh, I call it the magic trick. A child who is brought disabled in OPD, and in five seconds you make him all right. Rest of his family is your fan for the rest of their life. Their payment is in form of extreme goodwill. Okay. I still have patients who came. I had one of my friend who's a who's a choreographer model now. Uh, her small child on a 31st December night during a party, two-year-old kid. They they called me up at one o'clock at night, and I. Put the child's elbow back in five seconds, and like they were so worried and depressed, and he was laughing in five minutes. For last twenty years, I get good service at their restaurant and invited to all their parties. I think that has paid back adequately. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, next time we'll do some other topic. We'll move away from the elbow, and let me see what Ashok has planned out. But uh, next Wednesday again, eight or eight thirty, depending on how my OPD finishes. But we'll try not to change the day and the time so that everybody is making time for the talks. So shall we stop, Ashok? Yes, I think Dr. Gopendra has raised his hand. He has some questions. Acha, bolo bolo. Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. Sir. Transpygial separation of humerus. Yeah. In, yeah. Is it, yes, sir. It's always type one or two shoulder hernia, or does you do you find sometimes? Three no. So four? so if you remember, so if you remember my talk on lateral condyle, you see the Mursky classification. I showed one type which goes across the physis. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So that hmm. is actually a transpygial separation with a metaphyseal beak, which is shoulder two. Yes, yeah, shoulder two. Yes, sir. Do you understand? So a salter yeah. two transpygial is actually a. You can also call it as a because the starting point is on the lateral column. So technically, mm. you can say this is lateral condyle, but the larger chunk is transpygial because that chunk yes, is very sir. small. And depending mm. on the side which it displaces, mm. if it goes posterior medial, no, it's transpygial. You call it transpygial. Treatment is going to be same. Put it back and put a little pin there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. and if it is at birth most of the times transpygials you will get not get in older children the commonest yes, is less than 6 months and most of the times it's from the gynecologist child is born hmm. not moving elbow two things you are worried about one is whether there is obstetric palsy second palpate hmm. the clavicle whether there is a clavicle fracture and third is a hmm. transpygial separation and fourth if at all if at all is septic arthritis of the humerus Very small neonate mm. coming from NICU suspect infection also. Mm. So pseudo paralysis in a neonate. These are the differentials: mm. clavicle fracture, transpygial separation, obstetric palsy or septic shoulder. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's type two or type one. Whether they're type doesn't two matter. Four exist. No, no, no. Type three, type four is not seen, not reported. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank Ashok you. is saying, "Ask more questions. Why he doesn't want me to stop?" <laughs> no, I want them to be very clear about this. This is an important topic, and lot yeah. of, yeah. like we have noticed, yeah. even in your practice, we get a yeah. lot of reference where these kinds of things are missed. Exactly. So my practice, what happens is that I always get delayed presentation. I never get it primarily. It's always late because it's been missed. And exactly. that idea of the talk is awareness. Once yeah, you are so aware, that... like I said, what the mind doesn't know, the eyes don't see. Now exactly. that you know that it's not only lateral condyle and supra condyle; these do exist. Any swollen elbow with a normal-looking X-ray, please call him back after a few days, even if you are given a slab and get an MRI done. In today's day and age, you are not pardoned for missing these injuries in the court of law or in the eyes of the patient. It's better to have a normal. report rather than missing something but you have to take the reports with a pinch of salt because most of the times when i send also the radiologist has zero idea what i am asking for okay it's for you to tell him are i am looking at this please see if there is a fracture in it because they are they themselves don't know what is test is very few people radiologists will tell you correctly hmm. 
So ultimately, when you ask more and more, they start reading. That's right. how society progresses. That's why I want all the delegates in our fellowship never to miss these lectures. That's why I was saying to ask questions. Yes, yes, no, no, absolutely. Asking asking question is your birthright, and like we that is why we have the WhatsApp group. Later on, yes. also when questions are there, we'll answer them. And thank yes. you for watching the World Cup final with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Portugal, the yeah. Argentina, France, Argentina, France. Two hours was going. Then so for trash. Uh, MRI is better or CT scan? MRI is always better because, as I said, these are osteochondral lesions. The CT will mm. not show you the cartilage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in so adult always, CT is better, but in pediatric MRI is better. Yeah, mm. but adult yeah. when you want to see bone, when you want to see cartilage, growth plate, or ligament, MRI is mm. better. Depends yeah. on what you want to see. Uh, Doctor Sanjay. What? Yes, sir. In children below one year, where the yeah. capsular uh, epiphysis has not appeared, to yeah. diagnose lateral humeral condyle fracture is MRI advised? If if you are suspecting, I would do it or an arthrogram. Arthrogram. But if you see, yeah, yeah, or a, see, sir, the cheapest investigation is actually ultrasound. Okay. But your sonologist should be trained to use that seven point five megahertz probe and look at cartilage in a pediatric elbow. Okay, musculoskeletal. The problem is they are all tuned to doing only uh, obstetric ultrasounds. Especially in the peripheral areas, you won't find a good sonologist who will do. So you you should catch hold of one person and make him do uh, uh, musculoskeletal ultrasounds. Musculoskeletal ultrasounds. Mm. Hmm? Hello, sir. May I? Yeah, sure. And then. Sir, how is it for? I mean, how we do the MRI in a child? Like we have to admit is and give some sedation. Yeah, he will need yeah, sedation yeah. because sedation. if he keeps on moving, he, they do a little pedicloral or some sedation. Usually, okay. the MRI center has an anesthetist on call, so they call him and do a little sedation and then do. MRI. So normally, what I do in casualty is that I'll tell them that this is an injury which seems to be not very well seen on X-ray, but the elbow is quite swollen. And this may require additional treatment, and we need to see it better. You have two options: either I give anesthesia and do arthrogram and treat it simultaneously, or we give one sedation and do an MRI. And if it shows something again, I have to give anesthesia. Some parents will say, "No, no, we want to do the MRI first." So then let them do the MRI. If they say, "Okay, go ahead and do the arthrogram," on an arthrogram, I can make out what is happening. I don't need an MRI. so it becomes diagnostic come therapeutic and like i said no now with experience of 20 years plus i know what i am looking at and what it is going to be but what see the idea of again the like ashok said the idea is for you to understand that these things exist and uh, train yourself use the dye suspect it get that ultrasound don't send off saying yeah, elbow la slab la on ha theek hai theek hai bara hona Okay. And the okay, advantage with uh, sonography, I think, sir, that we totally depend upon sonologists. And in exactly, MRI, exactly. And your so, yeah, MRI, you can see the film yourself also. Sonologa, yeah. not many orthopedic surgeons understand sonography. So you are dependent on that fellow. Yes, sir. And um, uh, that arthrography talk is there. I will try to share it uh, on the group or something. do something and ashok if you can just share those two papers yes sir. our I, igo paper also as well as the original paper by uh, peter waters 2010 sure. gpo okay. okay i'll share both of them yeah okay so shall we call it a night yes sir yes sir thank you thank you very much sir. we'll okay. meet again you, next everyone. time i think it thank was you, quite sir. smooth this time this seems to be working well yes yes sir okay okay Chalo good night everybody good night enjoy the weekend good night thank you sir thank you sir